My name is Dr. Elena Gribensukova, and I'm a neurologist and an assistant professor of neurology at Northwestern Medicine. When we diagnose transverse myelitis, we start by obtaining a very thorough medical history. So we want to learn about your symptoms from the very beginning and also about any preceding factors um, such as recent viral illnesses, recent vaccinations, other autoimmune disorders recently diagnosed, travel, fevers, chills, any unusual rashes. And from there, we uh, perform a more thorough physical uh, examination, specifically neurological examination, focusing on the areas that have been affected by um, myelitis. We also obtain an MRI um, of the brain uh, and spinal cord. Uh, we, at times, have to look at the blood vessels in the spinal cord as well. And ultimately, for all cases of transverse myelitis, we obtain a lumbar puncture. It's a spinal tap, which allows us to look at the cerebrospinal fluid that bathes the spinal cord and the brain uh, for evidence of inflammation. We also look at some blood tests to evaluate you for many rare um, antibodies um, that are autoimmune markers um, that could give us an answer, a clue into what the diagnosis is. Transverse myelitis in its acute stage, when the patient is presenting with uh, neurological symptoms, is is typically treated with intravenous steroids. If the patient does not respond adequately to the first-line treatment, we also can utilize uh, plasma exchange, and it's a way of filtering your blood and trying to get rid of any potential uh, pathogenic antibodies, or using IVIG, uh, which, uh, which is intravenous immunoglobulins. Uh, it's an infusion of proteins that actually reduce inflammation. And going uh, forward, it just really depends on what the cause of uh, transverse myelitis is. So if we find that this is due to multiple sclerosis, the patient is started on a specific multiple sclerosis treatment. If this is neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorder, um, the treatment is uh, accordingly for NMO. In the context of COVID infection, at times we do see that people who have previously had transverse myelitis may re-experience old symptoms that actually improved over time. Well, that's common, and most of the time it's completely benign. What it means is that the scarred areas, the damaged areas in the spinal cord, are under a little bit more stress in the setting of inflammation. This can happen with COVID infection or influenza or a urinary tract infection, and it's typically benign, and yet we have to pay attention to it, and we have to uh, examine the patient, obtain a good history, and frequently perform an MRI of the spine to also prove that this is a pseudo-exacerbation and not a real um, attack in which you would actually see evidence of new inflammation. All of us have certain genetic predispositions, but most of these autoimmune conditions are not, strictly speaking, genetic. We carry certain genetic predispositions that through multifactorial interactions with our environment, whether it be sunlight deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, or uh, nutrition, um, people can become more prone to manifest their predisposition to autoimmune disease, and they develop disorders like NMO, multiple sclerosis, and a lot of times these disorders present with transverse myelitis as their first manifestation. The care of patients with transverse myelitis is very complex because people struggle with so many different symptoms that really uh, make their life very challenging. And it's not always just weakness or numbness. It's a lot of times things like bladder urgency or issues with bladder control um, and incontinence. It's nerve-related pain. In fact, it can be pretty severe pain that can prevent somebody from enjoying their life. And ultimately, Many patients with transverse myelitis struggle with those symptoms that we can see, and that's depression and anxiety. And the care of patients with transverse myelitis doesn't stop with a diagnosis of transverse myelitis and simple treatment of 
underlying disease. So the focus of Transverse Myelitis Program at Northwestern Memorial Hospital is to provide comprehensive model of care for patients with transverse myelitis. That includes experts in um, depression, in vascular neurology, in physical therapy and rehabilitation, um, people who um, specialize in treatment of pain, uh, people who are uh, neurourologists who specialize in treating uh, bladder problems. So it's a really a team approach to a care of a patient. Currently, we are working on an upcoming trial that will actually um, be evaluating um, a medication for the treatment of people who have MOG associated demyelination who often present with transverse myelitis. So we are hoping that this treatment may become the first FDA approved treatment for the treatment of MOG associated demyelination and transverse myelitis due to that condition. We really try to focus on improving the quality of life by managing pain better, by managing spasticity better, by improving their sleep, and also addressing things like anxiety and depression that definitely can have a major impact on your quality of life, your sleep, and your pain perception.